Hey everyone, this is Nurse Ryan, and today we're going to go over some practice questions for respiratory drugs as an introduction to pharmacology. In this quiz, we'll review some of the basics, including bronchodilators, corticosteroids, and xanthines. I'll walk you through the answers and rationales for each question. Starting off with question number one, the correct order to administer inhalants is to administer any bronchodilators before any corticosteroids. And for each question, I'll leave a bit of a break where you can pause and think about the answer. So the answer here is A, true. Bronchodilators are to be administered before corticosteroids. It is important to dilate or open the airway first before providing the anti-inflammatory. This ensures that more of the medication reaches the site. Follow the rule of B before C to remember this easily. Bronchodilator before corticosteroid. And question number two. Most bronchodilators decrease inflammation to open the airway and allow clients to breathe more easily. And the answer here is B, false. Bronchodilators dilate the airway and it's corticosteroids that decrease inflammation. Moving on to question number three. A client just received a new prescription for a xanthine to control her COPD. It is important that the nurse reminds the client to avoid which of the following in her diet. And the answer here is A, chocolate and coffee. Caffeine should be avoided while taking xanthines, such as theophylline, because the effects of the drug may be increased by caffeine. Question number four. If a client with COPD is experiencing an increase in mucus production during the night, what should the nurse recommend to increase the client's comfort? And the answer here is C. Remind the client to raise the bed or sleep with additional pillows under his or her head. Slightly raising the head of the bed or adding additional pillows under the client's head may help to decrease the buildup of mucus and increase client comfort. Question number five, long-term use of corticosteroids can result in the development of? And the answer here is B, osteoporosis. Corticosteroids affect the metabolism of calcium and vitamin D, which increases the risk of developing osteoporosis. Question number six, which of the following is not a likely side effect of the use of corticosteroids? The answer here is D, an increased risk for hypoglycemia. This one may be a bit harder. Corticosteroids cause all of the following except for an increased risk of hypoglycemia. Corticosteroids increase the risk of hyperglycemia by increasing insulin resistance. Which of the following can present as a bronchodilator and as an anti-inflammatory? The answer here is D, xanthines. The mechanism of action of xanthines is not well known, but has been shown to cause both bronchodilation and anti-inflammation. Moving on to question number eight, it is possible to administer an inhalant which contains two separate drugs, such as a bronchodilator and a corticosteroid, within the same inhaler. The answer is A, true. Combined inhalers such as Advair, which is the combination of salmeterol and fluticasone, contain both a bronchodilator and a corticosteroid. Combined inhalers are common for patients who regularly require both medications. Question number nine, a client is likely to experience more systemic effects while taking an inhaled corticosteroid versus an oral corticosteroid. And this is B, false. Oral corticosteroids enter the bloodstream and can affect all systems more easily. Inhaled corticosteroids enter the intended site immediately and act primarily in the respiratory system. Inhaled medication will generally have fewer systemic effects than oral medication. And our last question for this quiz, number 10. Which of the following drugs would the nurse use for a client experiencing acute respiratory distress? The right answer here is B, salbutamol, or Ventolin. Ventolin is a short-acting bronchodilator and is known as the rescue inhaler of choice when dealing with acute respiratory distress, such as an asthma attack. And that's it for the respiratory drugs quiz. If this video has helped you out, please consider leaving a like and subscribe. I would really appreciate it. If you have any questions or would like me to review a specific drug or topic, please let me know in the comments. And thanks for watching.